Welcome, everybody. On behalf of the Jordan family and the entire staff, welcome to Wiscasset Speedway. This is your track announcer, Ken Minot, ready to bring you the call of today's race program. The most important rule while you're here today, have fun. Drivers are ready. The crew is ready. We hope you're ready too. It's race time at Miss Cassin Speedway. Get settled in, folks. The show starts now. Hey, say goodbye, Dan. Woo! Say goodbye. All right, we got Dan McKeg Jr. riding on cloud nine from his uh, career first pro stock win a couple weeks ago. And Dan, how you feeling today? I'm feeling great. The cars feels pretty good. We haven't changed much since last week. So I'm just ready to roll. And uh, how's the last couple weeks been for you? Lots of uh, phone calls and messages from family celebrating and congratulating you? Yeah, a whole bunch of them. It's hard to answer all of them, but I make the time. But yeah, it's, I mean, I'm still on cloud nine, like you said. I mean, it's kind of unbelievable to beat some of the best guys here. So it's awesome. And how do you like these garage setups? I see you guys are renting one. There's only uh, a handful up for grabs, and uh, you guys snatched one up. Yeah, they're super convenient. We leave everything here, basically. I mean, we bring the cars home here and there and the tires, but, I mean, other than that, it's perfect. Yeah, some guys are leaving their car, but they only have one car. You have to bring it home because you got to bring a different car the next week, right? You run the uh, the Pro Stock and a Strictly Street. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's not too difficult. We leave this car at Tony Ricky's house, and he does most of the maintenance, and we just bring the Street Stock, so it's pretty pretty easy. Now, how was the Street Stock going for you last week? I mean, it, it was pretty good. We were fighting the car all day with being it tight and stuff like that. But, I mean, we tried our best. I think we got sixth or something like that. So, I mean, it's going consistent, and we're up there all every week. So, it's pretty good. All right. And what's going on with the old man? Is he fully retired from racing or what? Uh, I wouldn't say retired yet. I mean, he's probably going to hop back in it here and there. But, I don't know. He's committed to helping me and Sean, like, get ourselves better. So, yeah. Who's Sean? Uh, my brother, my twin brother, Sean, he spots for me in both divisions. Oh, I gotcha. Is Sean ever going to get behind the wheel? Um, I've been pressuring him, too. He's, he did really well at Beechridge. He just doesn't want to try a new track, but I'm, he'll, he'll get in it. Yeah, you guys are twins. You guys look uh, pretty close alike. You know, just as long as he doesn't end up in the top three, I think if he hopped in the car to get your points at some sometime, nobody would know the wiser. Yeah, I mean, we get, we get both sides if we look alike or we don't, but, yeah, he's got the skills. He should hop back in it, but, yeah. All right, Dan Jr., thanks for talking with us. Now I got the 17 Pro Stock of Andy Gilbert. And, uh, Andy, when you showed up here at the beginning of the year, I didn't know you from the hole in, from a hole in the wall. And uh, you're starting to run up front and really showing some stuff out there and certainly impressing me. So, I, yeah, I, I, foresee, I foresee that we're going to be uh, talking a lot about more about you and saying your name, looking pretty good. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, I'm hoping to stay right around there, maybe move up a little bit. We'll see uh, tonight if it works out in my favor. Yeah, I certainly uh, thought that you were in the running for a top three last week because I think in the first half you were right up there. And then, uh, refresh my memory, how'd that race go for you? I was running pretty good, and then uh, all the big names came up, huh? And the car was a little tight at times, and they, they had enough space to make room on the inside and get by. All right, so Andy, I uh, understand you come all the way from Jackman, and you said it's about a three-hour trek, so you guys are utilizing uh, one of these garage rentals to keep the car here and help you on gas mileage a little bit? Yeah, it helps out a lot. It saves us probably over 300 bucks every every month, so it's pretty much worth it to just pay and use a pickup instead of two. Yeah, certainly there, Andy. So uh, how's she going today in practice? You feeling pretty good? She went pretty good. I tried uh, old tires and new tires. I was faster than the old tires. Maybe I didn't. Run enough on the new tires to really get the speed out of it. All right. Well, Andy, we wish you luck tonight. Anybody real quick you want to thank for getting you here? A uh, big thank you to my dad, Marco Gilbert. A uh, big thank you to Stefan that came up, my sister, uh, my uncle, and uh, Joel, JT uh, Race Cars. Yep. Yeah. So he's he's a pretty good setup guy behind the scenes for you. I know you know there's a lot of uh, chassis shops out there, and uh, Joel Tolzer really hooks you up. Uh, well, he's... 
he's pretty nice to me. He allows me to bounce ideas off of it, off of him, and tell me if it's real bad or if maybe I'm going the right way. So he helps out a lot. All right, cool, Andy. We wish you luck tonight. Have fun. Thank you. All right, the 19 of Andy Cajurl is hanging around the uh, Nicole Benincasa pits today, but unfortunately he doesn't have a car because the last Super Street race uh, was a bit of a rough one for Andy. And uh, before I get your input there, in the heat race, we noticed that you had a mid-pack starting position and then you opted to start in the rear, and that did not pay off very well for you. So tell us about it. No, it did not. Um, you know, one of the reasons why we did that, it's, you know, we only got a few laps in the first feature, and... Um, I feel really comfortable in the car. Um, we're still working out some bugs, so I just didn't want to be in the way. Um, turns out that was not the right choice. Uh, we could have hung up there with those guys and um, just tried to stay out of trouble and start in the back and found the trouble. So um, that'll be the last time we do that. Um, so we'll be taking our handicap when we return, wherever that may put us. So, um, yeah, it's frustrating. I mean, it's um, probably the uh, most damage I've had in a race car since I've owned one. And, um, basically peeled the entire left side of the car off. So uh, we're still working at it. Uh, we'll be here in a couple weeks, though. So um, the car will be back together, and we'll only miss these this tonight, which is kind of a bummer. It's two races, um, two, also missing out on two tires. and um, But we'll be back in a couple weeks ready to go, and um, we should have some speed in the car. Um, we'll have Coastal Race Fabrication. Uh, James Osmond go through it and just make sure everything's up to snuff before we race again, and we'll be good to go. So on another note, Andy, the last time I talked to you during the autograph session, uh, you said that the end goal is to move up to ACT racing, but I had no idea that you had an ACT car in the works. So I saw it on Facebook that you were driving it. Did you actually race it, or was it just a test and tune so far? No, so it was actually my dad's car. Okay. Um, he did race it. We actually crashed in practice. So a uh, car was coming off, going to the pits, and ended up three wide, and he didn't see him or... Whatever happened, uh, but we didn't even get to race the car. So it's still in the garage. Um, we'll see about that. Um, but it'll, we're a little bit away from that. We want to get comfortable in this, and we like racing here. Um, but it would be nice to try some other tracks eventually. And, um, you know, I want to I want to try a late model pro stock at some point. Um, but obviously with that comes the additional cost of racing. And um, I don't want to break the bank, like I mentioned a couple weeks ago, and and uh, we're just doing this for fun, man. This is for fun for us. I know people chase trophies and all that. We just like hanging out at the track and having a good time. So so I say this in conversation with uh, fellow racers and promoters all the time that we need other tracks. You know, something like Beach Ridge closing down. We might have gained a few race fans and race cars from that, but for the overall picture, it's not good for racing. And so we need tracks that can work together. And I've always said that Nobody wants to build a race car and be isolated to one track. Like you say with ACT, you love racing here. Maybe this is your favorite place, but you want to venture out and try other stuff once in a while. Yeah, I think that's why the ACT route is good. Um, for the most part, there's a lot of parity in ACT. They've, I think they've had 21 or 22 ACT rules package events this year with 21 different winners. So, um, you know, and their rules translate to a lot of tracks in New Hampshire. Um, where you can just show up on a weekly show and race and not have to change over a bunch of stuff. Um, I know it's tough. Losing Beach Ridge has obviously um, been really tough because we know the other track there doesn't necessarily always want to work with everyone. So that's frustrating. But, um, but yeah, I, I totally I agree. I mean, it's, it takes a lot of tracks willing to work with each other. And we all have, you know, we don't want to see a track shut down like Beach Ridge. Um, that's not what we want. So any chance we get a chance to, you know, work with other tracks and things. You know, it'd be nice to do that. Certainly would. All right, Mr. Kerhurl, have fun today. We haven't talked to Nicole Benincasa very much this season, and she's going to be doing double duty in the two Super Street features tonight. So, uh, Nicole, we haven't seen you in uh, Victory Lane, unfortunately, yet this year. You got two chances tonight. You think uh, maybe this could be the night? Hopefully. We uh, have a good handle in cars so far. We finally broke uh, fastest speed so far this season for us in practice. So we're hoping that we can kind of carry that into the heat in both features. Hopefully just have a good clean race. That's what, that's what our biggest goal has been this far, is just taking the home car home in one piece rather than destroying it, going for a win. But, um, yeah, that's our main goal, just be able to get into the second feature at least. Yeah, I think a lot of people are shooting for that. Maybe take it easy in the first one just to at least make it in the second one. and. Uh, 
You think the gloves are all going to come off with people in the second feature tonight? Probably. They were talking a lot of game in the driver's meeting, but um, I think that's everyone's biggest goal is just to get into the second heat. So hopefully the first one's smooth sailing. Yeah, that's right. You guys did have your own uh, driver's meeting over there. What kinds of things were they talking about? Just talking about making it a clean, fun race again, talking about keeping out all the drivers hydrated. It's very muggy out today and very sticky, so it's just average driver's meeting. Nothing special. All right, Nicole, so uh, refresh my memory. I know you've had a lot of rain out, so haven't had too many races yet, but uh, how has your season gone so far? Have you, you haven't been involved in any serious wrecks, right? No, we got into a little bumper rubbing last week, but other than that, we've kept the car clean. We have had no major damage issues or any of that. Knocked the toe out a little bit last week, but that's about it. Um, been able to more focus on speed rather than putting the car back together, luckily. So th I feel like in all this year has been better luck. We're just focusing on speed this year. All right, Nicole Benincasa in the 41 Super Street. Good luck today. Thank you so much. And we got the Jackrabbit, Jack McKee in the uh, 20, 28. All right, his brother's 26. I always get him mixed up. So Jack got your first uh, win this season last week, and uh, now you got two attempts at uh, the features tonight. Um, you think you can get another one? Yeah, uh, I'm pretty sure I could get another one. Time coming. Pretty, pretty sure I might be able to get one today. <laughs> the uh, car feeling pretty good in practice? Uh, it felt pretty good. I felt like it could be a little bit better. But other than that, it should be pretty good. Now, uh, the, the, the last time out here, yeah, you did win it, but it was a bit of a rough race, and there's only like six or seven cars out there. What's going on with this class? Uh, I think people driving over their heads, driving in too deep, not thinking people would slow down. It's all about momentum. And we want to stay safe out there, right? And these cars are more finicky and twitchy. Like, if any class is going to not drive like that, it should be this one. Yep, yep. I certainly hate to see one of these things uh, go hard into the wall so yeah did they have a special uh, driver's meeting for you guys this week uh no not really it showed us that we should be a little bit calmer out there only seven cars Did seven again this week yep seven again all right jack well uh yeah i wanted to talk to your brother there for the modified he got into a uh, rough one there a couple weeks ago and um unfortunate to hear that he's not going to be back in the near future so uh but you're gonna stick with it yeah i'm gonna stay here for as long as i can and uh not gonna um get another car to uh for for group two so we're gonna start just seeing you guys for group one nights yep that's the plan all right jack and then maybe some family camping right on the other weekends maybe all right jack have a good night and uh have fun out there hopefully you can get another feature thank you and with that, a good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome back home to Wiscasset Speedway, Maine's biggest and fastest. Ready for another week of racing action for you. This is week 13 of the season already. We are heading into the second half of the 2023 campaign. Glad you could join us here for Group 1 in an action. Couple of divisions running uh, double duty couple uh, features for the four-cylinder pros tonight and the super streets as we try to work on making up a couple of their lost races this year from the June rainouts. So these are the Brackets Market four-cylinder pros. This will be a 10-lap heat race to go with their first 25-lap feature, and then they'll have a, another makeup 25-lap feature later on tonight. So busy night for this group as well as the super streets. Sean Dickinson is up on the flag stand today. Nate's got the weekend off. Lights off on the pace car, ready to go next time around. Jacoby Thacker and Taylor Lane are up on the front row. Then comes Josh Hall in the 117. And Reed Reno to the outside in the 77. Ben Burgess is in the 7B. Most recent winner is in that number 28. That's Jack McKee out of Dixmont. And Chastity Shorty in the number 19 fills out the field. Here for heat number one, your one and only heat for the four-cylinder pros. Off they go and off and running down in turn one and two as they all scramble for position. Jacoby Thacker coming out with the lead on the first lap. Trying to protect that line in front of Josh Hall in the 117. Josh already a two-time winner this season. Able to get that preferred lane on the inside. 
He'll take the lead away from Thacker and set sail for turn one. Reed Reno follows him up in a second, and now Ben Burgess in the 7B. He will follow into third. That'll shuffle the 51 of Thacker back into fourth. This is uh, one of our Group 1 divisions that basically didn't get to race at all in the month of June due to three straight rainouts. We've had two different, actually uh, three different winners in four races this season. Halfway this time by. Josh Hall is the, that driver that has won two of the races. Side by side for the runner up spot, Ben Burgess in the seven, Reed Reno in the 77. Good side by side run for those two drivers as they chase the leader. Josh Hall. Things finally get sorted out. Reed Reno had to wrestle that car out of turn two, hangs onto it, but loses hold of second place with two laps to go this time by. Reno trying to get that spot back. He and Burgess get together in turn two. Ben with a good save and able to get it going again. White flag is out. Taylor Lane inherits the third spot now. Final time out of turn three and four. Checkered flag is ready. And Josh Hall will take the win. Looking for the green flag this time. And you can't get much better than that. They are still two by two all the way through the field. That is some good super street racing going on right there. Mike Orr with a slight advantage through three and four. Brandon Sprague fighting back strong and they're still neck and neck out of two. This time Brandon Sprague has a little bit of an advantage down the back chute. Mike Orr fighting back hard on the unpreferred high line. And here comes Nicole Benincasa. She might have something for you, leader. She's going to pass Mike Orr down low. Nick Morton's going to try to follow, keeping tight on her bumper down on the inside line. Brandon Sprague started the season late. He's missed a few super street races this season, but now leading this heat and... Uh, looking strong in a hurry. But he slides up out of turn four and gives the inside to Ben Casa. She's gonna start leading laps, I believe, for the first time this season. The 41 is up front, followed by Nick Morton now coming through in the double zero. Oh, tough break for Sprague. He's getting freight trained on the inside. Bubba Pelton motors on by, as well as David Greenleaf, and now Sprague is fighting to hang into the top five. Nick Morton getting awfully confident going to the high side, and he's got the advantage out of two. Now Nick Morton's going to put the double zero up front as he clears going into three. Three laps to go. And slight contact coming out of four with Pelton and Greenleaf is going to space the field out just a little bit now. Nicole Benincasa gets some breathing room due to that one, this time with two to go for Morton.
Your two front runners at the beginning of this race are now the two last place cars. Tough break for Sprague and Mike Orr. Nick Morton looking to be a heat race hero with the white flag waving now. Ben and Casa now trying to hang on to second. Pelton and Greenleaf have gathered it back up after that contact a few laps ago, and now they're all over the back bumper of the 41. Nick Morton definitely wins that one, but holy cow, what a race for second and third we had. Heat two coming at you with Mo Young and Jason Oaks this time. Can Oaks clear Young on the top side? You don't see that happen too often, but Oaks is gonna do it. The 11 car goes up front over Maurice Young in the 03. And Young is unable to maintain. Oaks is pulling away a couple car lengths and Young has some company of Josh St. Clair all over the back end. Trouble for both of the Osmond boys tonight. Brett Osmond is gonna pull out in the 50 car as well. Tough break for the Osmond father-son duo. And he is not under his own power and cannot coast all the way into the pit. Josh St. Clair is right there to try to follow Oaks up through if he can. Started this heat race out with seven cars, now down to five, and Oaks reclaims the lead, and just as I suspected, Josh St. Clair was gonna be right there, ready to take that inside line away from Maurice Young. Young finds an opening and gets into third, right in, in front of Kevin Sherman, before he can put that 11 car up into the top three. Halfway flags, five laps to go. Oaks does not want to slip up one bit. Josh St. Clair is ready to squeeze that nose inside. St. Clair is going to stalk his every move and see if he can get Oaks to slip up. But uh, for the first circuits, he can't. So now St. Clair is going to look to the top. Maurice Young is going to slip up in the middle of one and two and allow Sherman to sneak in a little bit closer. Two laps this time for Jason Oaks. Your points leader, Josh St. Clair, looks to the top side once again, trying to feel out Jason Oaks. White flag's going to fly. And if St. Clair stays to the top too long, Maurice Young is gonna snatch second place away. Here we go into three. We've got a battle for second and third. Checker flag's gonna be flying this time for Jason Oaks. And Maurice Young sneaks one in there right at the last second. Just like in the first heat for the Super Streets, we had a last corner change up for second and third. Heat race number four on the schedule. Let's go green this time. David Austin in the 45 off to a slow start. And Ricky Austin, as well as Gunnar Jocelyn, are going to blow right by, as well as the 88 of Derek Cook. We're three wide into turn three, and the cars are checking up. Gunnar Jocelyn drifts up high and gets in Cook's way. And Cook hard on the brakes. He's locking up that inside tire and smokes a blazing. But Cook is going to take over second now going into three and set his eyes on Ricky Austin, the 42X.
Gunna Jocelyn able to maintain with the top two. Both cars are actually starting to reel in Ricky Austin, it looks like, as it's a three-car breakaway from the other two. David Austin in the 45 and Brandon Alley in the 23 round out the field. But Cook is definitely closing in on Austin now. Less than a car length, driving hard into turn three. Closing in on a fellow Toyota Celica. All three front runners are the same generation of Toyota Celicas. And they are definitely getting to be a popular choice of car for a four-cylinder street mini-stock type of class. Derek Cook to the top side this time. Will Ricky Austin play nice and give him a good line up there? Ricky Austin driving a little high into turn one, certainly making things difficult for Cook. Let's see some good side-by-side -side racing between these two. Cook's going to cross over and look to the inside, and contact is made. Austin gets all sorts of squirrely and hangs on to it. Austin all over the track on the backstretch, blocking Cook and Jocelyn, getting into both of them. What is going on out there? Two laps to go. Cook finally making strides on the top side. He's got the advantage down the back chute. Austin fights back hard on the inside and Cook is still unable to clear. We've got a barn burner under the white flag. Once again, Austin running up high in turn one. Come on, guys, play fair. Two corners to go, and Cook finally clears going into turn three. Checkered flag flies, and a well-earned win by Derek Cook. He certainly had his work cut out for him on that one. All right, we're going green this time. And we got a repeat from the first heat. The outside groove makes uh, some good headway right off the bat. David Cook in the 49, chased down by Shane Weber in the 7, the squirrel. And uh, correction, the second place number seven is Mickey Landry. My mistake on that one. That's the seven X in second of Mickey Landry. Zach Audette closing in on him though. Now the squirrel breaks into fourth and has a clear track ahead of him to try to chase down that top three. That is Shane Weber, the squirrel in the seven. Zach Audette looking to the top side through one and two. And he'll maintain there going into three. A lot of times we see guys make an attempt going into the corner and then settle back in single file by the time they come out. But Zach Audette's making it work and he is slowly making progress on the outside of Mickey Landry for second place. He's got the fender up on him going into turn three. But your leader, David Cook, is way out there and he's gonna see the halfway flags now for five laps to go. Zach Audette will clear and settle the 19 car into second place. Four laps to go for that beautiful number 49. David Cook finally getting some really flashy graphics on his Toyota Celica this week. I'm definitely digging it. The 49 car looking sharp.
Kyle Ouellette maintaining with Shane Weber. Weber is the defending uh, Thunder 4 champion. And Kyle Ouellette rounding out the top five, maintaining within a car length on that seven car. And Weber drifts way high coming out of turn four, but Ouellette is not quite there enough to take the inside away from him. So they'll continue to duke it out just about bumper to bumper for fourth and fifth. White flag's gonna fly on the second and final Thunder 4 mini heat race. David Cook out front, Zach Audette comfortably in second, Mickey Landry also comfortably in third, and that'll do it as the checkered flag flies for Cook. Great field of pro stocks this evening, the first of two heats. And once again, it doesn't get much better than that. They are two by two throughout the first three rows. Beers is gonna break free away from Nick Calvert. And Calvert will slip in that opening in between the leader and then Shane Lane holding down third at the moment. One car getting hung out to dry. That's the 17 of Andy Gilbert, unfortunately. Gilbert falls backwards in a hurry and he'll slip in single file behind the 72 of Charlie Colby now deep in the field. Matty Beers putting some distance on him and Calvert in the 07. And then Calvert putting distance on him in third of Shane Lane. Shane Lane about to be overtaken by Nick Hinckley in the 15, as well as Daniel Harding is coming in hot on the high side in car number 38. Five laps to go. Hinckley made it look easy on the high side, but Harding having a tough time at it, and he follows back in single file to make up your top five. Daniel Harding in the 38. Fastest car on the track right now is none other than Nick Hinckley reeling in that top two in a hurry. Daniel Harding tries the top side once again on Shane Lane. And Colby is right there up tight to follow. Daniel Harding this time makes it work and he clears for fourth place. Two laps left for Matty Beers. He might be able to win this one as it looks like he's got enough distance on Calvert and Hinckley, but Calvert might be on defense mode now with Hinckley all over the rear end. Last lap now, can Hinckley make a move on Calvert? He does not have a turn, a good turn two execution, and it doesn't look likely this time. Checkered flag flies for Matty Beers. Both of your most recent winners in this one. As the last time we saw the Pro Stocks, they had double features. And it was McKegg Jr. in the 40. And Logan Melcher, your uh, ones that came out on top that special night. But tonight, Kevin Douglas might have something to say about it. He's starting to edge out McKegg Jr. on the high side, but McKegg fights back good on the turn four this time. Just when you thought Douglas had the advantage, Dan Jr. is coming back strong on the low side. Dan McKegg Jr. turning up the wick. 
Josh St. Clair ready to see which lane will make some progress. Oh, and Kevin Douglas this time clears. That was a good four lap side by side battle, but this time at the halfway point, Kevin Douglas is gonna start leading some laps. Josh St. Clair was on their heels when they were side by side, but now at the moment, St. Clair is having a tough time maintaining with Dan McKegg Jr. Jr. slips up out of turn four. He gets a little bobbly down the front stretch and Josh St. Clair is ready to capitalize. McKegg Jr. leaves the inside line open and St. Clair is there to fill the void. St. Clair is gonna snatch it away and put the Dave's World number 14 up to second, just as we see the two lap to go marker. Looks like McKegg Jr. should be able to hold on to third. It's a little ways back to the next car, the 01 of Jet Decker, and then they're side by side for the top five spot. Last lap to go. Kevin Douglas looks like he's got this one in the bag. Through turns three and four, he's got about 10 car lengths on Josh St. Clair coming to the checkered flag. All right, ladies and gentlemen, get settled in. Here is your starting lineup for today's four cylinder pro 25 lap spotlight feature. And now for your drivers, starting in the seventh position, in car number 77 from West Bath, welcome Reed Reno. In the sixth starting position, driving car number 19 from Winslow, welcome Chastity Shorty. Your most recent winner goes off in the fifth position today in car number 28. Out of Dixmon, welcome the Jackrabbit, Jack McKee. Outside row two in the fourth starting position. In 7B, out of Hartford, welcome Ben Burgess. To the inside of row two, starting in the third position. Driving car number 51 from Winthrop, welcome Jacoby Thacker. And to the front row, starting in the second position on the outside, in car number 70, out of Phillips, welcome Taylor Lane. And at the pole position, he is a two-time feature winner already this year, and your point leader in car number 117, out of Mount Vernon, welcome Josh Hall. That is your starting lineup, folks. Let's get our drivers strapped in and ready to race. All right, guys, this is gonna be the cutest fire up we've heard all season. So, Rosalie, let us hear those magic words. Um. Drivers, start your engines. All right. <laughs> Nick, I know you're cute, but that. Yeah, exactly, I was, I was talking about me. I was gonna be cute. No, we tried. Rosalie got a little bit shy. And Sean Dickinson gives him the green. We are off and running. Taylor Lane got a jump, but Josh Hall rebounds nicely, takes the lead and brings Thacker with him up the inside rail. Lane shuffled back to the fourth position. Josh Hall with the lead. Ben Burgess picking his way up the inside lane now. Thacker trying to hold on to third, but Taylor Lane coming back in the 70. It has been, oh, trouble out of turn number two. Thacker goes around. No movement from the 51, so 
Caution will fly. And we turn our attention back to turn four. Green flag is out. A good heads up battle between the top two drivers in the class here on this restart. Josh Hall had to rebuild much of that 117 after getting caught in a wreck two weeks ago. Ben Burgess had his own share of tough luck that night as well, but they are doing good up front. Side by side, back behind them, Jack McKee in the 28, Reed Reno in the 77. Ben Burgess able to take the lead away from Josh Hall. Hall having difficulties holding on to that low line. Jack McKee's going to come to the inside and take over second. Josh Hall shuffled back to fourth, and he's got some folks right on his heels. Reed Reno peaking low as they get into turn number three. Reed sticks it in there and comes out with third. Josh Hall still fighting things in that 117. The handle's starting to go away on the point leader. He is falling back into the fifth position. Ben Burgess, his dad, Chris, races in our late model sportsman division, also racing super streets tonight. Yeah, Josh Hall really struggling, nearly caught the backstretch wall last time by the car really free up off the corner. Burgess looking for his first win of this season. He's been runner-up twice. Comes into the weekend two points behind Josh Hall. If things continue the way they're going, uh, he'll at least take over the point lead going into feature number two tonight. But Josh doing the wise thing with that car. Uh, don't get past the, path, the fact that he's uh, only pushing it as much as he can. He doesn't want to wreck the car in race number one. Wants to uh, give his dad and the crew an opportunity to wrench on that thing and make it better for race number two. This time by halfway. Trouble for the 51 of Jacoby Thacker. Spins it on his own out of turn two that time. And with our leader bearing down through turn one and two, the caution flag will come out second of the race. Ben Burgess is the driver at the point. Now he's got Jack McKee to the outside for the restart. Green flag is back out. Ben Burgess quickly shakes off the challenge of McKee and Reed Reno able to take advantage of that inside lane and pull up into second. Reed Reno, fourth generation of the Reno family and actually uh, earlier this week or last week got a chance to turn a couple laps in his grandfather's modified. Burgess and Reno a little bit of distance now back to the third place car of Jack McKee. Reed getting a little racy now in that 77 closing up on the leader. Had a hog of a race car to run two weeks ago. Had a lot of mechanical issues under the hood and he said no power when he hit the gas. And he's right there to pressure Ben Burgess for the lead. 
Got to give a shout out to Chastity Shorty in that number 19. She's uh, had a tough time getting going early in the season. Another young driver putting in some practice time and showing great improvement. And looking to put together her first top five finish. Five laps to go. Reed Reno loading up for another try on Ben Burgess. Ben, couple feature wins last year, looking for his first here in 2023. And also looking to take control of the point lead after this race. This time by two laps to go on the number seven of Ben Burgess. Chastity Shorty spins it over in turn number two and a close call as uh, Jacoby Thacker ends up catching the left front. Got a bunch of debris over there in turn two. Tough break. Uh, it just called Chastity's number there a couple laps earlier. Again, part of the learning process of where the edge is on these cars. Twenty-three down, two to go. Ben Burgess and Reed Reno. Again, Burgess with the transponder issues. So he is your leader, Reno second. They'll get the white flag next time by the stand. Reno, good run into turn three that time. Even up out of turn four with one lap to go. Tucks it in behind the seven as they make one more wrap around this three-eighths mile racetrack. And Burgess pulls away by a length. Reno fights back, and here they come to the checkers. Ben Burgess, a two to go restart. Definitely had to have you on the edge of your seat. Yeah, this one's good because we've had a lot of bad luck, but I don't know if I uh, was supposed to not like those cautions or like them. The car was getting a little hot there, so that might have saved us. But, oh my God, I gotta thank Daisy, <laughs> Daisy Valley Racing, Dave Brandon a ton, Reed Reno for giving me a bunch of breaks. I respect that a lot after what happened in the heat race. Um, my grandfather, my dad, my mom, my grandmothers, and my great-grandmother, and my family, and fans, of course. Yeah, and Ben, hey, you say the car was getting hot. You mean the uh, engine temperature was climbing? Yeah, we were, we were just about at 220, and you don't want to get too much higher than that. No, I'd say not. All right, Ben, hopefully we'll get another chance to talk with you later tonight for feature number two. But on to Reed Reno. He's always smiling. It's like, it's in the genes. It's like, even if he's in a bad mood, he's just always got a grin on his face. So Reed, again, a caution right at the end. And uh, did you think you had a shot at that 7B with a side-by-side -side restart? I thought I did, but I couldn't really hold it on the outside. So I tucked in right behind him, but I didn't realize the race was over. I, <laughs> I thought there was still one more lap to go. That's what my dad told me, but I guess not. <laughs> All right, man, who do you want to thank on the 77 car? Uh, I'd like to thank my mom, dad, um, Cody, Nate, uh, Mikos Excavation, Reno's, oh, Reno's Excavation, Creative Play Child Care, Bob Berry Concrete, Three Blondes Boatwork, AAA Northern New England, Marty Hill and Sun Painting, JBRH Excavation and Concrete, and DAR Construction. Great job, runner-up honors going to Reed Reno. And then our most recent winner a couple weeks ago, Jack McKee settles for third tonight.
Jack, they had a little extra in the bag for you? Yeah, they had quite a bit extra in the bag there. <laughs> All right, Jack, who do you want to thank on the 28 car? Uh, I want to thank my dad, my mom, my brother, my spotter, Dylan, um, Tryon Armory, Benny's, CN Newcomb, Lucky Energy, AM Gray's, Frost Garage, Teresa Southwest Grill, um, a lot more sponsors. But Marcy Light Spirit, too. Again, like I said to, uh, to Ben, you got a lot more sponsors. Maybe you'll get a chance to rattle them off in the second feature. Nice job on a third place run for Jack and Reed and Ben Burgess with the win to wrap it up here in Coastal Auto Parts Victory Lane. And we'll send it back up to Ken as I hear some motors firing up in the pits. Here we go, green flag flies. And Nicole Benincasa catches Nick Morton off guard. She has the advantage through the first corner, but Nick Morton powers down the back stretch to take over the top spot. David Greenleaf trying to follow up the bottom underneath Benincasa, and he will do it. Brandon Sprague goes spinning on the infield grass. Will he refire? Waiting on that 32 to see if he can continue. Unfortunately, he can't, so the yellow flag flies. And on this green flag, Nick Morton was no slouch in the double zero. He clears David Greenleaf. And now Noah Haggett is looking to the inside. Greenleaf threads the needle and gets down to the bottom. Noah Haggett doesn't want to allow it. There's contact with the rear bumper and front bumper of Haggett. And they're still going at it. We got a hard hit. Oh my goodness, ladies and gentlemen, Brandon Sprague having a rough night. Couple of cars in the back, not crossing over, so Brett Osmond will take advantage of that. Nick Morton and Noah uh, David Greenleaf. A couple of teammates and buddies up on the front row, and Nick Morton able to take care of the challenge from Greenleaf. Haggett right there on his tire tracks. Greenleaf pedaling hard on the outside, but Haggett's got the advantage on the low side. Bubba Pelton coming into the picture, looking to get his first podium of the season. Greenleaf caught on the outside. One car that's making up some ground on the outside is that 0-5 of James Osmond. He's in the top five now. Greenlee finally shuffled back out of the top three, drops into the fourth position. As Nick Morton pulling away a little bit from Noah Haggett. Osmond in the clear now in fifth. Some cars uh, scattering on the back stretch as a couple came together. Morris Young still working the outside lane. A couple of cars there in the back. Haven't made much of a move to this point, including the 33 of Josh St. Clair and Brett Osmond, who had mechanical problems in the heat race. First 11 laps complete 
And the interval still stretching out now over a second for the double zero. Haggett all alone in second. Pelton pacing him there in the third spot. Keith Drost on the outside looking in, holding six, but now Josh St. Clair on the move. St. Clair in the Mike Hodgkin zone, number 33. Now looking outside. Jason Oaks got the 11 car sideways on the backstretch. Really struggling now in that yellow number 11. We have reached halfway this time by 15 down, 15 to go. Things still a little tight for the third and final spot in victory lane. Bubba Pelton has got it. David Greenleaf has been hounding him for the last five laps. Greenleaf looks a little bit better through the corner. Pelton pulling away a little bit on the straightaways. Right now, still Nick Morton with a 1.2 second lead. This class has produced three different winners so far this season. Looking to make it four different winners. There goes Chris Burgess in the 31 down pit road. Jason Oaks continues to struggle in the 11. And he's started dropping. Ten laps to go when they come to the stripe this time. That interval still remains just under 1.2 seconds. Half a straightaway cushion for Nick Morton. Noah Haggett looking to nail down his best finish in a Super Street. Pelton using up a lot of racetrack on corner exit, but Greenleaf not able to capitalize in the 58. That lead has increased to almost 1.3 seconds now. Five laps to go this time. Closest battle still remains that third place battle between Bubba Pelton and David Greenleaf. Greenleaf looking for his second podium finish of the season. That lead has gone back and forth between one second and 1.2 seconds. Now the signal is up for two laps to go for Nick Morton. Oh. 
White Laundry ready to fly one more time around. And we'll be looking at another first time winner. Final time down through turn three and four. Checkered flag is up. And Nick Morton is a winner here at Wiscasset Speedway. And we love first time winners here at Wiscasset Speedway. Let's send things trackside. Nick's got your top three. Yeah, I remember how excited this cat was when he got his first second place finish a couple months ago. And now he's gonna kick that up a notch on the excitement level for his first win. And then uh, I think it's the first time we've seen Noah in the top three, at least this season. Nick Morton climbing out. Super ecstatic about this one. Wow, Nick, how'd you like that long green flag run? Uh, it was pretty awesome. Uh, Just what you needed? Yeah, those cautions at the beginning kind of scared me a bit. No one ever got any smaller in my mirror, so I know he was staying right with me. Uh, started to sound like something was going sour late in the race, and uh, I couldn't get it into gear there, so I think I might have blown the transmission. Uh, uh, if I miss the second race, I don't really care. I just, we just won, man. That's a, awesome. This is awesome. Yeah, uh, you topped it off by uh, sweeping the races so far, the heat and the feature. Off to a great start tonight, and hopefully you can get your transmission figured out. Who do you want to thank on the, uh, the Zoom double zero M? Uh, first, I got to thank James Osmond. I forgot him when I got up here last time. Without James, this car wouldn't. I'd be in the back. Uh, I think TNL Automotive, Logan Melcher, Larry Melcher, the whole Melcher family, they do everything for me. Palmer's Property Care, Moe's Customs, my dad, he does a lot. Uncle Pat, Uncle Punk, they do a lot. Tyler Bailey's my spotter, he does an awesome job keeping me calm. I think my mom, Hilltop Collision, Henny Automotive, GRH and Sun Storage, uh, everybody held back that helps out. So, Nice job, Nick Morton, and hopefully we'll see him in feature number two. Noah Haggett. Is this your career best Super Street run? Yeah, I had third uh, two races ago, but this is the best. Yeah, he's topped at one more spot and still looking for that, uh, that first win. What do you think? If you had a restart, you think you might have had something for Nick? Uh, I don't know. We were pretty close. I was giving it all I had, but it started to go up in temperature. But uh, yeah, he was good, but we were pretty close. But I don't think I could have got him. But it no. would have been close. It would have been close. Some good racing with you and Greenleaf there for a while there, too. Yeah, we had a good battle. Uh, um, he went to the outside, and I got a good start that second time, and uh, I get, was, was able to get by him. All right, who do you want to thank on the 54 car? Uh, I got to thank uh, my dad and everyone who's helped me in the pits, uh, Greg and uh, Laid Back Lumber, uh, k and Property Services, the Cubby Hole Sports Pub, Ace Well Service, uh, Red Zeets, um, Ideal Portable Toilets, and James Osmond, Coastal Race Fab, and Tom Cost. All right, Noah Haggett with his career best Super Street run, coming home with runner-up honors, and then Bubba Pelton. I'm sorry if I'm so bad with these stats here, but is this your first top three of the season? Yeah, this is it. All right, it certainly is, and that's a different story from last year. I mean, you got some wins and a bunch of top threes last year, and you're coming in a late stride this season. Yeah, they've changed a couple rules this year, and this is a brand new car. Still trying to figure it out. It's getting closer. We'll get it eventually. All right, Bubba, who do you want to thank on the 27 ride? Yeah, thank Davis Erectors, um, Zach Ow Construction, Dave, my wife, my daughters. There's a bunch of them here, a bunch of fans up here I work with. Uh, Dave's wife, there's a bunch of them over there. Timmy, he helps me every week when he can. He's, we're all busy, so appreciate all their help. We wouldn't be here. All right, Bubba Pelton wrapping it up in victory lane. We'll send him up in front of Nick's car for some top three winner photos and wrap things up in Coastal Auto Parts Victory Lane. Green flag is out and we are racing.
Derek Cook and Ricky Austin, one and two. Deep in the field, Kyle Willett sliding it right in there underneath the 23 of Brandon Alley, and he'll quickly take that spot away for seventh place. And start to catch the front half of the field as they started to put some distance on the rest of the pack. Everybody freight training down to the inside. Everybody fighting for the same piece of real estate right behind the 88C of Derek Cook and uh, things getting heated. Ricky Austin going down the middle three wide on multiple occasions and falling outside of the top five now. Trouble for the 42X of Ricky Austin. That situation could have been a lot worse as that thing shut down out of turn two in a hurry. Everybody's splitting him three wide and making it through just fine. It's the Cook brothers, Derek and David up front, one and two now. And then Gunnar Jocelyn's trying to fend off the charge from Zach Audet for third. Looks like Audet's gonna make the top side work though around the number 25 of Jocelyn. Also up front, David Cook in the 49, trying the top side around his brother Derek, getting sideways through one and two that time and losing his, his, uh, his pace. David Cook scrubbed off a lot of speed getting that sideways and so now he's settling back in single file up tight on the back bumper. Doesn't dare to go or to uh, commit to the top side for very long with Zach Audette in his rear view mirror. It was a uh, top three full of Toyota Celicas but Audette's gonna put the Acura Integra right in the middle of them. Smoke coming from the right front of Audette's car and that almost spins him out. I think he's got a tire rub and they're gonna split him three wide. This is not a normal circumstance for Zach Audette. He cuts a right front tire. At least I think that's what happened. There was some smoke coming out of the right front. Wow, Audette is done. He pulls it in. And Kyle Willett really got the short stick on that situation. Tried to go around Audette real quick on the high side, three wide, and he was throwing anchor out there up in the marbles and lost three spots in the situation. Ten laps in, and it's still the Cook boys as they were. Derek and David, whoa, contact between them two. Hard contact in turn one, almost sent David flying off into the turn one wall, but he recovers. These guys both fighting for the same piece of real estate. And it's gonna start getting heated here in just a bit. They're halfway through the 25 lap feature. Next time around at the line, It'll be 13 complete with 12 to go. Lap traffic's gonna be coming into play here shortly. Kyle Moore in the 29 and Brandon Alley in the 23, uh, 45, sorry. Brandon Alley. Uh, Brandon Alley's in the 23. I'm talking about uh, David Austin in the 45. We got David Austin in the 45 and Kyle Moore in the 29. They're currently side by side and the leaders are closing in. And David Cook is making the top side work and he tries to pinch Derek down. And they come together once again. What's new? David sideways, oh my goodness. Hard, hard contact. These guys are relentless and Derek Cook Kyle will let hard into the turn two wall. Wow, yellow's out on lap 15. 
just as I was talking about that David and Derek Cook situation. And Derek comes to a stop at the top of turn three. Kyle Ouellette was mid-pack and he clobbers the turn two wall. But here we go, green for the Thunder Fours with 10 laps to go. Derek Cook tries to go three wide and pass some cars right off the bat, but it does not work out very favorable for him. And he gets dragged behind by the 45. Zach Audette's going to blister his way up through six laps down, unfortunately. And Derek Cook will get by a couple of cars. But it's a long way back to his brother of David up front. Mickey Landry gets by Gunnar Jocelyn for second. But Gunnar Jocelyn is certainly no slouch tonight. He's hanging right on to the back bumper of that 7X. Oh, I can see some trouble on the uh, number 19 of Zach Audette. It looks like he's got some serious tire tilt and camber on the left rear of the 19. I don't know if it was like that when he first went in the pits, but it is certainly standing out now. Five laps to go. And David Cook now has been unchallenged here after the restart, after a bunch of heavy hitters wedded, uh, headed pit side. And Derek Cook obviously having some issues being quite a bit off the pace this time in the 88C. In the first half, Derek Cook was certainly one of the ones that was looking like he might win this tonight, but he is well off the pace and just riding around for points now, it looks like. Inside the final two laps, David Cook trying to nail down his second win of the season. Mickey Landry solid in second. The race is for third. Gunnar Jocelyn holding off the defending champion. Down the back chute one final time. A full straightaway cushion. And the checkered flag awaits. David Cook will get his second win of the season. Mickey Landry will take second. Gunnar Jocelyn takes third. Let's send things down to Nick in Coastal Auto Parts Victory Lane. And the 49 is looking awfully flashy tonight with some uh, new colors and graphics. David Cook climbs out for the victory. All right, David, I'm sorry if I've asked you this uh, before. You and Derek, are you guys brothers? Uh, he's a biological brother, but he's not my brother. He ain't even a piece of my family. Somebody, right, somebody ought right. to tell him that he ain't going to win a race by blocking. All right, Derek and David certainly had a heated battle. David block. comes out on top. Everybody. And David, who do you got to thank on the 49? Uh, we're going to thank Rick Austin, White Designs, uh, in memory of Robert Lowe, Positive High. Uh, what else we got? EFP Inc. John's Auto Repair and Towing, Mini Me Bowtie Company. And uh, thank everybody for coming out and supporting me. Whether you boo me or whether you cheer me, you're still thinking of me. So I love you all. Runner up honors go to Mickey Landry. And Mickey, it seems like more often than not, you're beating your car owner. 
Second, the squirrel. Second, second. Yeah. <laughs> he don't care that he's beating his car owner, right? You just want that first place trophy. That's what I want, yeah. All right, what's, what's it going to take? Uh, I don't know. I wish I would have stayed uh, green flag because I was probably, I don't know, six laps to catch a pack. I sat at the back there. I got hauled up a little bit. But, no, I had a good car. Uh, like I said, I wish I would have stayed green, though. Uh, I'd like to thank Shane, Coleman, Michaela, Natalie. Uh, happy birthday, Alicia. It's my wife's birthday today. Um, no, everybody on the car. Um, without them, couldn't do it. All right, it's a good car, but still seeking that first career win or uh, this season in the Thunder 4 class. Uh, Mickey Landry Jr. with runner-up honors, but Gunnar Jocelyn in the 25. Uh, first time we've seen you in victory lane this season. Glad to have you back. Yeah, glad to be back. Uh, been a long time coming since Fall Fury, so <laughs> been, it hasn't been from a lack of effort, that's for sure. Thank Mickey for cutting my tires. Thank Shane Weber for all the help he does. Um, Thank my dad, Glenn's Garage, Richard and Vanessa, everybody that comes out, fans. Glad to be here. All right, Gunnar Jocelyn, glad to have you back. And we'll send him up front for victory lane photos in front of our winner, David Cook's car. Let's go racing, Pro Stocks. Hammer down they go onto the back stretch. Matty Beers bringing the 15 of Nick Hinckley up to second. Calvert hanging a tough on the outside. He'll settle it into third. Daniel Harding fourth, Charlie Colby fifth. A lot of racing back behind them as the top guys are scrambling their way toward the front. Up front though, Hinkley on the outside. Hinkley takes the lead by, oh, 35 one hundredths of a second. Matty Beers not letting him take it lightly though. Beers keeping pace on the low side, keeps a fender underneath. Hinkley will have to earn his lead on the outside. The champ being patient on the outside. Little bit better there on the outside on corner exit. Stays a half a car length true to the outside of Matty Beers. Calvert waiting in third. See how that all shakes out. Beers looking strong, racing door to door with a two time champion. But Hinkley again being ever so patient on the outside. Outside the top five, you've got a lot of cars trying to pick their way through. Gilbert is in sixth. McCaig in the 47th. Josh St. Clair just broke into the clear and eighth up from the back of the field. Kevin Douglas ninth and Shane Lane now shuffle back to 10th. Hinkley finally has the lead for himself. Josh St. Clair trying to pick his way up through on the outside. St. Clair and Kevin Douglas, two usuals up front. Two usuals that we see up front, but they are mired in traffic. Currently holding down eighth and ninth. They are side by side behind Andy Gilbert and Dick Dan McKeg Jr. Got some fresh faces up in the top five. Hinkley, Matty Beers, Nick Calvert. Charlie Colby, the best we've seen him run since his comeback a couple weeks ago. And Daniel Harding rounds out your top five at the moment. The action on track is still between Kevin Douglas and Josh St. Clair as they're both looking for a way around Dan McKeg Jr. Bunched up tight on the back bumper. And there's been a few occasions 
where Dan McKegg has slipped up a little bit and leaves the inside just barely open. And Kevin Douglas is trying to fill that void, but at the same time, he's trying to be Mr. Nice Guy and not make contact with the rear end of the 40. Here he goes again. He's got the nose in there, and there's a little bit of a door slam going into turn one, but Douglas is gonna stick it, and he'll take over the seventh position. A little bit more slamming right behind him with Josh St. Clair filling the same hole underneath McKeg Jr. And St. Clair completes the pass for eight. 15 laps into this one, and we're not even halfway. It's a 40 lap feature, and still a long ways to go. Nick Hinckley still pacing the field. Up over a second lead now on Matty Beers. Hinkley looking for his first win of 2023. Looking to turn around a couple years of tough luck. Take advantage of a starting spot up near the front. Charlie Colby holding down the fourth position. Daniel Harding is fifth. Kevin Douglas working the outside of Andy Gilbert. Put the 18 car up into the sixth position at halfway. 20 down, 20 to go. The top guys in the back still looking for a caution perhaps, but Nick Hinckley definitely not wanting one. Hinkley with one win last year, looking to nail down his first here in 2023. Full straightaway up now on Matty Beers. with problems in that number 11. No movement yet out of the 11. Caution will fly. Three cars rejoin the field as we're going back green. Here we go. Hinkley quickly shakes off the challenge from Nick Calvert. Here comes Charlie Colby up the inside. Calvert has to get out of the gas early, and here comes Kevin Douglas into the top three. Hinkley trying to get his first win in nearly a year. Problems for the 07, looks like, I don't know if Calvert gave a break job to the 14, but that really bunched things up back there in mid-pack. Calvert had enough of the 38 as they door slam into turn number one. Josh St. Clair has an inside lane on that 07. Things really getting cranked up there from fourth position back. St. Clair will take over fourth. Calvert will duck in behind to protect fifth over Logan Melcher. Things heating up now for second. Colby. Charlie Colby got it sideways over in one and two. Douglas patiently waited for him. That helps Nick Hinckley, but a lot of patient driving from Kevin Douglas. Logan Melcher has made it by Nick Calvert. Melcher is into the top five now. 
Inside the final 10, nine laps to go now. Things mixing up back there between Kelly Moore and Dan McCaig Jr. They've exchanged a lot of paint the last lap. McCaig gets right up under the tailgate of the 47 and they get it sorted out finally. Now we'll check the lap times between the 15. Uh, actually, we got a race going on for third. Josh St. Clair able to get by Charlie Colby to take over third. Five laps to go this time by. Douglas is just a little bit faster than Hinckley. He's got the lead down to about a second, but he's running out of time. Logan Melcher able to move up into the fourth position, getting by Charlie Colby. This time by two laps to go on the 15 of Nick Hinckley. Colby goes around. Calvert's got an issue with the number 07. The leader takes the white flag. Checkers fly, Hinkley gets the win. All kinds of chaos on that final couple of laps. Hinkley gets the win. A bit of a Cinderella story there, getting a monkey off of his back. Not to discredit any other racers that are seeking their first career win, but Hinkley here is a multi-time champion, and he's gone almost a year without a feature win. Man. I, I see you getting closer to there. Nick Hinkley, you've had a lot of bad luck over the last year, and this one has to be a huge relief. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it seems like I'm all, I've been on the backside of them two cars there all year, the last couple of years, so um, they got their stuff together. Thank God we got a better starting spot, but um, fired off a little tight off that restart, but seemed like it was coming to it at the end. But really got to thank uh, ideal, uh, ideal Portable Toilets for all the help they give us. Um, all the crew down there, man, we've been busting our butts on this and just, just didn't have enough. We've had there, but we just couldn't, couldn't finish it off. So uh, got to really thank them. Uh, happy belated birthday to my father. He, he turned 85 yesterday. Just kidding, it's really 67 or 68. But, um, and my wife and my kids. Uh, but, and also thanks all you guys for coming. Uh, we'll take it. Nick Hinckley, ladies and gentlemen. And as Hinckley said, this is a bit of a usual top three, but he says he's usually behind this blue and yellow car. Kevin Douglas comes home with runner-up honors. Man, congrats to Nick. You know, he, uh, he's one of the drivers I have the most respect for here. Um, him and I have raced door to door for years and never had an issue. So congrats to him, he deserves it. Um, thanks to all my family, my friends, my fans, everybody that's here. Um, it really makes this worth doing. And you know, this year I've just kind of focused on having fun. You know, I don't care about the championship. I just want to have fun. And uh, all you guys are what makes it worth doing. So I really got to thank them. Uh, TJ's Place, Island Dairy Treat, Jordan Lumber, Ray Haskell, John Sullivan, Strictly Roofing, 1890 Primitives, uh, and JR Fabrication. Um, everybody that plays a role on this car, I really appreciate it. Kevin Douglas, ladies and gentlemen. He'll certainly take second place after his results from the doubleheader last week. Josh St. Clair. Uh, coming next week. 
If anybody had a tough time coming up through the field, it was certainly you. Yeah, the car was just off. Uh, it's the whole tire game. Uh, you know, I was put left sides on. Every racer and everybody that knows it wants rights or all four. So uh, we took a hit there, but we made it to the front. Um, these guys were definitely better. Uh, congrats to Nick. It's been a been a rough road, and I'm glad to see him up there winning. So, uh, and again, distance, 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 man. That's all there is. Anybody else you want to thank, Josh? Yeah, I got to thank uh, Wentworth family, uh, country and coast, uh, m and Painting, Dave's World, of course, DNC Electric and Earthwork, and uh, Larrabee Construction, Duvall's Automotive. Uh, a bunch of guys that helped me all the time. And uh, again, congrats to Nick. We used to sit right there somewhere when we were teeny boppers selling ice cream, chasing girls, and here we are, <laughs> racing it up. You got your girls now. You got your lifetime ones, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, wait, I got to thank my wife. She's an amazing <laughs> wife over there. Uh, gave me two of the most beautiful kids and lets me do this all the time. And, and uh, I do catch a little grief, but she doesn't kick me out yet. All right. Josh St. Clair, he's got another one coming up. He's still got to battle it out in the Super Street feature. Let's get you guys up here in front of the Ideal Portable Toilets number 15. For Coastal Auto Parts victory lane photos. And I think it's safe to fire up the next class. We got the second feature on deck for the Brackets Market four cylinder pro stocks. And we are off and running. Josh Hall races out around the outside. Around the outside they go and he'll take the lead. Reed Reno using the third lane. Took a peek on the outside of the 117. Wisely settles it back in to give chase on the outside lane. Reno running in third. Josh Hall trying to protect that lead, but Taylor Lane strong on the inside. She's trying to get her first podium finish of the season. By the way, with the updated points, Josh Hall maintains his lead as the point leader coming into this one, but only four points ahead of Ben Burgess. Taylor Lane hanging on to that lead, looking strong up front. Jack McKee coming into the picture in the 28. And it looks like Josh Hall is starting to experience that same issue he had in the heat in his uh, first feature this afternoon. The car strong in the early going, but then all of a sudden starts to tighten up and it has difficulty holding the low lane, losing speed in the corners. He's given away second and third in danger of giving away fourth now to Reed Reno. Goslin Insurance Super Streets will be coming out to race next and then it'll be Enduro time. Ben Burgess steps out of line in the number seven. Things started to tighten up, so he decided to take a look to the outside. There goes the 51 of Jacoby Thacker down pit road. They'll work their way around that number 19 of Chastity Shorty. Tight squeeze out around in turn four.
A little bit of breathing room now for the 70 as McKee and Burgess go side by side for second and third. Burgess gets a good run down the back shoot. Will nearly complete the pass on McKee. Can't quite get down in front. But now he does. And he sets sail on that 70 car of Taylor Lane. Taylor gunning for her first career win tonight. Got a strong run in the early going. But they're only halfway this time by. Burgess closes up ground quickly. Taylor's got the low side covered, so Ben will have to settle in and wait. Little slip from Taylor Lane. You saw it coming out of turn number four. Just a little bit of a slip is all it took. Opens up the bottom side, and Burgess takes advantage, looking to go two for two tonight. Lane tried to get back down in line. There was a little contact with the 28 of McKee. He had to get out of the gas and loses a little momentum. That brings Reed Reno up. Reno slips in turn four. Good save from the young kid in the 77. Ben Burgess looking to double up here tonight. Taylor Lane looking to match her career best, which came four years ago. Close racing for third. Reed Reno tucked right up under the back bumper of that 28 of Jack McKee. Jack holding solid in the third position. Reed Reno will peek to the outside now on the 28 of McKee. Then tuck it back in behind, keeping an eye on that third place battle. Inside the final five, we'll have four to go when they cross the stripe this time. Again, they'll work their way around that 19. Chastity doing a good job, just keeping down low and out of the way. Logging laps. Tonight it's, oh, contact into turn number one. They had been mixing it up for several laps. Now two to go this time by for Ben Burgess. Josh Hall able to stay back just enough to avoid the contact between Reno and McKee. White Laundry is out. One more lap to go. Final time down through turn three and four. Checkered flag is up. Ben Burgess doubles up tonight. In the number seven, Taylor Lane. And Josh Hall will complete your top three. Pulling down into Coastal Auto Parts Victory Lane once again. A familiar face tonight. Ben Burgess sweeps the brackets market for Cylinder Pro Stocks. Let him hear it, folks, one more time. Ben Burgess climbing out. And unfortunately, his dad, uh, Chris Burgess, is not going to be able to make the uh, Super Street feature with uh, some rear end issues. So he's joining Ben down here in Victory Lane. And uh, 
Well, Ben, you swept them. Uh, nice run tonight. Yep, that, <laughs> that was a nice one. I'm, I'm more proud of this one because my dad's been racing a long time, and I got two wins in the same night before he did, so that's pretty cool. But uh, I got to thank my mom, my dad, my grandfather, my cousin Cole, Corey, uh, Dave Brannon. They all help out a lot. Um, my family. Uh, I think that's it. All right, that'll do it from Ben Burgess tonight. And now on to Taylor Lane. She's matched her best career pro four position, still seeking that first win. And uh, you probably felt like you almost had it. Led a lot of laps, Taylor. Well, after the season that we've had, normally, you know, I would be upset I lost it on <laughs> one position, but no, second is great for right now. Second is great. <laughs> All right, any sponsors you want to thank on this beautiful 70 car? Yes, I got to thank, thank my family, um, my stepdad, my mom, for all the work they put into this, uh, Brackets Market, Brewer Logging, and Arbor Mountain Tree Services. All right, Taylor Lane matching her best career finish tonight. And then Josh Hall, just like Taylor, he got third and uh, he might usually say that third is no good, but after your first feature results, you gotta be pretty happy about this one. What happened in that first feature? Uh, to be brutally honest, our car sucked tonight, all night. Our car sucked. Yeah, but something had to be going uh, wrong in the first feature. I mean, you were uh, just off, way off the pace, so something definitely changed from feature one to feature two. What'd you do? Uh, we come back in from the first feature and found out that the uh, jam nuts on the left front tie rod backed off. So, no good. All right, who do you want to thank on the 117 car? First of all, I want to thank James Osborne at Coastal Race Fabrication. Uh, this, track, this car wouldn't have been on the track this weekend. Uh, Leighton Legacy Builders, Marina Cook Custodial Crew, uh, Barnyard Automotive, Wooden Sons, Driven Transportation. Uh, I don't know. I think that's about it. All right, and that'll do it from Josh Hall. We'll get you up here in front of Ben Burgess's car for Coastal Auto Parts Victory Lane Top 3 Photos. And I hear the Super Streets feature number two, firing them up pit side. Race number two tonight for the Goslin Insurance Super Streets. Make up race for one of the rainouts in June. Everybody hustling nicely. Little slip from the 74 of Drost. Had to get out of it. Coming out of turn two. Gives over the third spot to Brett Osmond. Here comes Mo Young on the 03. He's gonna take the lead away from Nicole Benincasa and Brett Osman will follow as well. The defending Super Street champion number 50 puts it up into second. Nicole Benincasa desperately trying to get back to the bottom, but Jason Oaks is gonna fill out the final podium position before she can. The 11 car moves up to third. Hard contact. Nicole Benincasa tried to clear across the nose of Bubba Pelton. Bubba Pelton did not let up off the gas and rides up over the hood of Benincasa's number 41. Pace car is in, green flag is back out. Brad Osman was the winner a couple of weeks ago, looking to rebound and come back with another win tonight. Morris Young's been a feature winner this season as well. Ironically, his first ever Super Street win as he's won over 70 races in his career here. Jason Oaks coming into the picture now. Oaks had big problems in the first race and they have certainly turned things around here in race number two. Okay. 
Hey, how about Nick Morton in that double zero? Shotgun on the field back in the 15th, 14th starting position, and he has raced his way up into fourth. His buddy David Greenleaf gives him a shot down the front stretch. Morton setting up shop on the outside now. He's going to go after third. Jason Oaks slips up out of line. Brett Osmond moves into second. Greenleaf trying to follow into third. Oaks caught on the outside. Morris Young stretching out his lead now. A little over half a second. Osman trying to hold off David Greenleaf. Speedleaf looking for a second podium of the season. They'll remain single file so far, no challenges. On that number 03, Mo trying to become the first repeat winner this season in the Super Streets. Checking to see if there's any movement back in the field from the likes of Josh St. Clair. Halfway this time, 15 down, 15 to go. St. Clair's been kind of mired mid-pack for this entire race. Running right now in six. Jason Oaks has slid all the way back to seventh. Again, David Greenleaf may be just a little bit faster than Brett Osmond, but not willing to test that outside lane quite yet. He gives Osmond a shove onto the backstretch. Osmond able to put a little bit of room between himself and that 58 car. That interval has remained about a half a second for Morris Young over Brett Osman. There goes Noah Haggett down pit road in the number 54. He'll drop out early. Greenleaf trying to reload once again for a try on Brett Osmond, but may wind up settling for third. No pressure from behind him from Nick Morton. Closest battle is right now for between fourth and fifth, or check that, fifth and sixth between James Osmond and Josh St. Clair. Twenty four complete when they cross the line this time. Five laps to go. 
Mo Young trying to hold it together for five more laps and race his way to his second victory of the 2023 season. Again, David Greenleaf reloading for another try on that number 50. As Young has started to stretch out his advantage. Osmond on defense now, trying to hold off Greenleaf. This time by, they'll get the signal for two laps to go. Greenleaf again starting to crank up the pressure. Has to reload again as they'll get the white flag and one lap to go. Final time down through turn three and four. Checkered flag is ready to fly. Morris Young will get the win. But let him hear it, folks. Mo Young in the 03. Thank you, Mary. Yeah. <laughs> Mo Young. You certainly had a less than favorable finish in the first feature. What'd you do to change things up? You had him covered in this one. Well, that's, a, that's the nature of this sport. You're either feast or famine. I mean, we made two small changes from the first race to this one. And just played in our favor. All right, who do you want to thank on the 03? Oh, I got to thank James and Whitney, your main roofer, Clark's Auto Supply. Um, Jeremy, him and I, we work on this thing all the time. Uh, Jeff and all the people that come here to support me, the fans, my, my parents. This is great. All right, Mo Young, folks. First repeat Super Street winner of the season. And on to Brett Osmond once again. Uh, did you have trouble in the first one, or you and your dad certainly had trouble in the heat race? Tell us about your night. On uh, the heat race, we lost the coil uh, in the distributor. Um, and a big thank you to Corey Creamer. He let me borrow the one out of his truck just to make the feature. <laughs> out of his pickup truck? Yeah. That's awesome. Um, the first race wasn't very good. Um, we lost the sway bar. We lost the plug wire, and the car was really loose. So we immediately just started changing it for the feature, for the second race. and. Uh, Track position is also a huge thing here because we're all so tight in speed. And luckily we had a good starting spot and we were able to make it work. All right, man. Awesome job with second place. Who do you want to thank on the number 50? I got to thank Ward and Sons Construction, uh, Coastal Race Fabrication, Pro Concrete, Cahill Tire, Red Eats, Laid Back Lumber. I think I'm forgetting someone again. Yeah, we'll go with that. And then I got to thank um, everybody in the pits, um, Mark Ward, Steve Ward, Peter Turner, Matt Bailey, and my father when he has a chance to give me a hand, and uh, my girlfriend, uh, my mom, and everybody that comes here. Brett Osmond, ladies and gentlemen. And now, David Speedleaf. Ah, oh, David, I think maybe you were a tick faster, but you just didn't have an outside car, did you? Uh, no, I couldn't get to the outside of it in my all. Uh, I was hoping he was gonna mess up, but he never did. So, here I am. <laughs> yeah, you were certainly doing all you could to try to capitalize on maybe a slip up, but uh, Brett Osmond played his cards right, didn't he? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah there's a reason why I go to his dad to build my car, so. <laughs> <laughs> all right, David, well, uh, your, your, your second top three of the season, who do you want to thank on the 58 car? Uh, I gotta thank James Osmond for everything he does. He built this car last year, new for me. Uh, it's been great. I gotta thank Primo Glass, Ward and Sons Construction, uh, Good and You, Apple Valley, Red Zeets, uh, Penny, obviously, she helps me out a lot, and uh, Hawk Motors, Shannon Unshelled, and I gotta thank my spot of Logan and everybody down in the pits. All right, David Speedleaf, everybody. Oh, well, Greenleaf, we'll call him that. He'll wrap up third place, Brett Osman second, and we'll send these guys down in front of Mo Young's winning car this evening for Coastal Auto Parts Victory Lane Photos.